Gold is near all-time highs. Has it reached its peak? Did you miss the boat? No, I don't think so. The exploding debt, change in the interest rate cycle, political and economic turmoil have caused the current move in gold. And those things are getting worse. In fact, Citibank projected gold to hit $3,000 an ounce over the next 12 to 18 months. I encourage you to protect and grow your investment portfolio with gold. I trust Dr. Kirk Elliott with Sovereign Advisors. With over 25 years of experience and two PhDs, Kirk Elliott is the best of the best in the industry. Call his office at 720-605-3900 and tell him Sean Morgan sent you, or just click on the link in the description to get that free consultation. Welcome to Sunday Scriptures for Patriots. I'm your host, Sean Morgan. I have my co-host, Barry Dermaz, and we're going to continue this talk on economic liberty and discuss some of the strategies people can use, some different, uh, you know, I don't know what you would call it, uh, corporate strategies. Uh, tell us about how you use trust, Barry. Yes, I would say you said corporate strategies. How about personal and professional finance? Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I, uh, <clears throat> so you're asking me how I use trust? Or just yeah, most people, right the average person yes. doesn't have a trust. Mm. Uh, you know, you only think about rich people having a trust. Yes. Well, okay. Let, let's. There's numerous ways we can look at this. I like to uh, just back up a bit and say when I was in Japan for three years, that uh, one of the clarities I got in, in in preparing to come back to America is um, to own basically to not have things in your personal name. Okay. It, now, this is a really sad time. This is a sad reality of things. Like you just can't, if, when, it, when it comes down to it, we're such a lit, litigious society. So if you have uh, property and goods in your name, then you're subject to losing that down to your person, down, down, down to your person. Versus if you have property and assets in an entity such as a trust that um, that's protected, and yeah, it's protected. Yeah, where you I, I can you give a really good example uh, that's really relevant for for what people are dealing with right now. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a lot of stories of people who have been vaccine injured, and they have to pay a lot of money for medical interventions that actually don't even end up helping them. Mm -hmm. And the people are stuck with thousands of dollar bills, medical bills. And let's say they've worked their whole life for some property. And then, uh, you know, these, yeah. they've got to figure out a way to pay for these medical bills and, and, and the, the medical companies uh, try to attach themselves to uh, the property, to liquidate the property that they work so mm -hmm. hard uh, to get. So, that's just one example, but there are a million examples. It could be that you had someone f fall on your driveway and they're trying to hold you personally liable, uh, you know, for that situation. And for some reason, your, yes. um, your insurance and your, your house isn't covering it or whatever. And they try to attach to that property attached to your personal name. But if you had it in a trust or a corporation or something separate than from your personal name, that property would be protected. Is that right? Yes, and um, some believe there's not an absolute protection there. Uh, you know, I um, study the works of Brent Allen Winters, who is a common lawyer here in our country, and I do recommend people to um, yeah, learn from him. Uh, and uh, his website is commonlawyer.com. And uh, last week, Sean, I mentioned that I have resources from him. So if people would like to get books by this underground lawyer they can come to liberty is the law .us. i have them there for sale and that will you know be in supportive and, and encouraging to us but nevertheless you have to be i say a junior lawyer in this day and age because <clears throat> let's go back to what we've been doing for several weeks we've been making a contrast over uh who is america's enemy these these the pagan view of god man law government and religion versus the American Christian or common law uh, idea of these things. And in Roman civil law, it is not friendly to us prospering. It is not friendly to our families being strong. It is not friendly, friendly to 
doing good on the, the Lord's land without their permission. But that is the pagan idea. That is an attack on our country. And uh, I realized when I was in Japan, just reflecting back on my life in America, and uh, you know, I, I'm, I'll cut all the strings off of modern living. And before we come back, you know, how we're gonna how we're gonna rebuild, and that's where we're at. We're in a rebuilding phase. Um, not getting in the way I'm rebuilding is to not get entangled with things. And so, you know, I'm sure a lot of our audience uh, listening, they are where I was or where you might be, <laughs> be you know, I, I just got pregnant, like I said, uh, with what's good about our country. And I just had to cut the strings and do a hard reset. And that's where we are. We, we've done a hard reset and now we are rebuilding. And one of those uh, strategies for rebuilding is to then no longer have things in my on my with my name on it, but put them in the name of our trust. Okay, I have a family trust that I set up that I am the trustee for, and I had my wife uh, be the grantor or the settler of the trust, and then I've established the children as the beneficiaries. Okay, <clears throat> so um, and it's important to know, Sean, that um, this is a pleasing thing to. God, uh, going back to Genesis 1, we've mentioned the scripture about, um, you know, that God, when he made man, man, male and female, he blessed them and he said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue. That's a key word, subdue it. All right. Using all its vast resources in the service of God and man and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air and ever, every, over every living creature that moves upon the earth. Now, that's from the Amplified Version, and I read it from that because of its expanded use of the, some of the terms, using all of its resources. <clears throat> so um, this is what it looks like to obey the creation order of God, to do good on his land, to use the resources for our benefit, not for corporate America, but for families, for, for the family. And... So uh, this is just an agreement within your family, you know, husband, wife, uh, and the children. Actually, husband and wife, quite frankly, children, beneficiaries. But it's a fiduciary responsibility to be a trustee. You can't just get reckless with this thing. You have to treat it right. right. L- let's break that down because the beneficiaries are the people who benefit. So the kids in your structure are, are getting the benefits uh, potentially in the long term. And then you are the trustee. What does that mean? What does the what does the grantor do? Can you explain the different roles? Yeah, the grantor or settler. I believe those to be uh, synonymous terms. And Sean, let me clarify too that um, there's a lot to learn about trust. Like I'm, I want to just say that um, I'm by no means an expert on it. I am learning as I'm learning so many things, uh, and it's a work in progress. It's you get some initial, uh, you get an initial idea and you implement some things, but then you perfect, you know, you can establish something, uh, say a trust, but you perfect it. I'm working on other projects about my status and creating my own, you know, family government ID. I'm not going to go with uh, the state ID. I'm going to have a uh, common law government ID and uh, to establish my status, but perfecting these things because the life is, is just that way. And there's just too much, but the trust settlement is a fascinating reality that is in our common law heritage for one and so if we think about ourselves here in america and the creation of of our states and then the federal government um people established themselves with agreements and and to trust that has been going on for way before america came around that's this is the English common law. And uh, I'm reading Blackstone on these things on the rights of people and the rights of things. Okay. And so um, there's a long history historically of just uh, protecting one's assets and then basing that on the scriptures that God says, you know, have dominion. The state's not to have dominion. And, and neither is the church, quite frankly. Um, 
God's people individually and as families, the church is not to become this, you know, monstrosity of a controlling thing. It's there to help equip people to take dominion. Okay. So all that to say that um, uh, we're still learning a lot. And so the settler or the grantor uh, that needs to be so someone other than the trustee. All right. And <clears throat> I had my wife do it. And uh, the beauty of that for me is that um, she is a foreigner with her Japanese passport. And that meant, meant that when uh, we applied for a tax ID number, which is also, you know, also called the EIN, all right, we didn't divulge a social security number because they want that on, on the form, all right? But I learned a little strategy where foreigners who don't have social security numbers can apply and then just put on their foreign status. And now we've retained some privacy. Okay. And that's, and I'm, I'm looking at it right here. I, I've got a notebook here. That's, you know, the family trust. And so it's the uh, SS form four and, and why, why uh, you get the EIN is for banking purposes only. Okay, so here, these trusts, the right kind of trusts, these common law trusts, they're they're not taxable entities. Okay, now there are trusts I believe that the state can create, but anything that the, the legislature of the state creates, they regulate. I'm not going with that. Um, this is a family common law trust, and it's private, Sean. And the only reason we fill out this uh, IRS form, SS4, is for banking purposes only. But the status of the settler, uh, in, my, in this case, my wife, is foreign. And, um, you know, that's that's a position you're in with your wife. Yeah, I, have, I also have a foreign wife. So yeah. what are the rights and responsibilities of a settler, grantor, and a trustee? Well, um, <clears throat> The, the settler, you know, is going to fill out the paperwork and submit it, okay? And, uh, you know, together, I mean, basically, I, I, I put all the paperwork together, got some trust templates and whatnot. And, but when it comes to executing, say, you know, some forms with the bank or this IRS form that, um, you know, I had my wife do that. Uh, and then with the trustee, Actually, the trustee is the one that's going to open up an account at the bank, okay? And that is what they call a fiduciary responsibility, all right? There, because we're talking, um, you know, we're talking finance, we're talking property, and uh, there is a responsibility there for, the, the trustee has a responsibility to act on behalf of the beneficiaries, okay? It's all about the beneficiaries, okay? In this case, your children. Yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, my children, and uh, be candid, I just named my son, I have four daughters and one son, I decided that I would just put my son down because he'll be a head of householder, most likely, and I wanted him to then have good relationships with my daughters, where just another little safeguard and protection, you know, just um, limiting him in my paperwork, you know, his name, his date of birth, okay. But, um, uh, but that's, you know, I can change that. You know, and these are documents that you're not divulging to people. When you go to the bank, <clears throat> Sean, they want to see a, what's called a trust indenture. They want to see the, the I -E -I N number. And I just gave them a cover page. Okay. They don't get all the trust documents. They might ask for that, but I just ignore it. I just give them what I want to give them. And, and they're fine with that. I mean, they, they accept it. You gave them something. And uh, uh, the trustee, uh, like I said, has a, um, a fiduciary responsibility. And so you want to keep good records, but just know that those records are for your own private use. Okay. Even though. Well, but I'm not, I'm not sure I'm really quite clear on what the rights and responsibilities are of each of the uh, roles in a trust. Mm -hmm. Well, Sean, like I said earlier, I'm actually still <laughs> learning it myself. Okay. Uh <laughs> I'm not the expert but on this. You're saying that the trustee is kind of the head of the trust and the grantor settler is kind of like the administrator 
uh, and the uh, beneficiaries get the benefits and the trustee has a, a duty. You said it's fiduciary. So th- yeah. they mm-hmm. have a duty to do things honestly and on behalf uh, of those beneficiaries. So you can't do anything that would go against the, um, the will or the benefit of those uh, beneficiaries. You can't act in, in complete self-interest. It has to be for the interest of the beneficiaries. Yes. If the beneficiaries want to fire the uh, trustee, they can do that. All right. That's okay. Yeah. They, they, mm-hmm, they can do that. And uh, let me, let me <clears throat> clarify uh, something here that the trustee or the trust needs to have in it to be a valid trust. Uh, and I learned this from Brent that there are actually three elements of a trust. And the first one is there has to be certainty of, of a, tr- uh, of a trust intent. Okay. So that means you have to use words. You have to put something in writing, a certainty of that. All right. And then uh, secondly, there needs to be a certainty of beneficiaries. So there needs to be at least one beneficiary named in the trust, right? Who this is for, right? And then the third element is certainty of property. And so that's about, you know, listing the property, the assets that are going to be in there. And, and that's an area that I'm, I'm, I'm perfecting, uh, quite frankly, like, let's just say vehicles, right? Uh, to convey the vehicles into the trust. Uh, I'm still learn. I'm still learning how to do that, and just like changing the title on them. Okay, I have two vehicles that to have one is an Oregon uh, titled vehicle, and the other one's Florida. And here I am in Pennsylvania, so I go to the Pennsylvania, uh, you know, Department of Motor Vehicles to get a new title. And whoa, I got it was just daunting. Like all the information I want. And I still haven't done it. I haven't, I just, it's just made my head spin. Okay. That's so, the way it is with these Roman civil law <laughs> people. Exa- they just yes. want to put all these burdens on you, all these, all the paperwork and bureaucracy. Uh, but yeah. yeah, basically you're just changing the corporate structure, the ownership of the property from the, uh, perhaps it was in your name, Barry Dermaz. And then, and then you're just putting the property in the name of the trust instead. And so uh, the nature of the ownership changes because it's actually the beneficiary uh, that, that ends up getting uh, the power, right? I mean, really, the, the ownership in the end is for the beneficiary, right? Yeah, they're the beneficial interest holders. But of course, the trustee, he holds the purse. Okay. But I mean, you know, it's just you're doing justly by the terms of the trust agreement. Okay. So glory to God. I mean, we're talking family enterprise here, family uh, holdings. And so God forbid that, um, you know, whoever is the trustee would do uh, something reckless on behalf of the beneficiaries. And uh, you could, you could definitely have somebody else than say the father or the mother be the trustee. Uh, But um and we may perfect this further along those lines, but uh, uh, yes, it's just got to keep good records and you got to have, uh, like I said, certainty of property in there. And, uh, and, th- and those are things that the court will enforce when you have an, a, an agreement there that if there's an issue that um, uh, you, you just protect your assets and our courts you know, we're not talking Roman, yeah, a lot of it is Roman civil law, but when we invoke our common law, uh, we are protecting our family interests. And so if we go, if we have to go to court, we, we want to do it on not Roman civil law, statutory law, unless the statute is in comport with our common law, in comport with our constitution, okay? In fact, I'm going to, um, in fact, I'm, let, me, let me give you an example. I have a Supreme Court case here, uh, and it's a pretty uh, well-known one if you deal with, you know, your rights. And like we did a, several um, podcasts on uh, traveling by right. And so this case is uh, used often there. But um, this is in the early 1900s where 
the uh, Justice Brown. This is the case of Hale versus Hankel. And he said for the Supreme Court that the individual may stand upon his constitutional rights as a citizen. He is entitled to carry on his private business in his own way. His power to contract is unlimited. He owes no duty to the state or to his neighbors to divulge his business or to open his door to an investigation. Glory. Uh, he owes nothing to the state since he receives nothing therefrom beyond the mere protection of life and property. His rights are such as existed by the law of the land, long antecedent to the, or, uh, the organization of the state. Okay? He owes nothing to the public so long as he does not trespass on their rights. Yeah, that just gets back to those common law principles that you can do whatever you want to do as long as it doesn't harm other people, right? That's exactly right. That's, yes, we don't need permission. And we're in a permission uh, saturated society. And that's one of the, the liberating truths is just, I don't need permission to do good for my family, for myself and for others. Look at this, Sean, the first amendment. Now, um, the first amendment, one of the protections there, the first amendment or to our constitution is that um, the right to assemble. Okay, the right to assemble. Uh, <clears throat> and yet they try to make and, give, force people to get permits to assemble all the time, don't they? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, the, the right to assemble to what, in other words, the right to assemble is a voluntary union. Okay, so um, <clears throat> in Roman civil law, you are, you know, compelled by force and threat of force to have uh a contract say with the department of motor vehicles or some other agencies you're under we're under threat with this okay and um but i you know many have broken out of that i have broken out of that that fraud and so that's that's the attack on our country but now contrast that with uh our good common law the christian idea of god man government and religion and that is voluntary union okay a marriage is a voluntary union and, and, and so perfecting the marriage, perfecting the family estate, you create this trust. That's another voluntary union, okay? And we don't need permission to do that. It's always been right to do that. But because America was successful in its founding era, Sean, because we threw off the tyrant King George III and, and, and Great Britain, uh, they just came back in a different way through all their lawyering. Okay, just like Jesus dealt with them in, in Luke chapter 11, he condemned them. The modern lawyering, this is the wicked thing that's um, attack on our country for a good 200 years. And we can rebuild, we, once we see that, we can rebuild uh, out of, from, you know, rebuild on our common law heritage based on God's word, God's law, and feel good about it and have a clear conscience. And <clears throat> I am ready. If I got called in a question, uh, I'm ready to defend my family. But you know what I've learned? We want to see, Sean, is that when you start putting paperwork in, filing it in the court, keeping good documents with you, um, when they ask for one thing, you give them another because you're, you know what you're, you know, no, you're giving them something better. They don't want you going in their courts, actually. They, they yeah, because they're intimidated when you're organized, right? Yes. When you, yeah, it, it kind of messes up. Yeah, it does mess them up. And uh, it's about consent. I don't consent yeah. to... Because they sense when people are incompetent and they basically become wards of the state, right? Yes. When, when, so, when someone doesn't understand the law, when someone isn't acting responsible, mm -hmm. the judges uh, just say to themselves, well, this person's obviously incompetent. We need to make decisions for them. But when you're showing that you, you are responsible, that you are organized, that you do understand the law, then they're like, well, he can handle his own affairs. He doesn't need us. Yes, that's right. You are, see, now you are self-governed. You're not dependent on uh, these folks. Now, they do have a le legitimate role when there's a true injured party. That's when they have a legitimate role. But until then, um, I am no longer complying with their 
wanting to categorize every area of life and living. So that's why if you go to a law library, you go to a local university, uh, you just see volumes and reams and shelves of laws for every nook and cranny by subject, okay, by subject. And that is not God's way. That is not the common law way. His way is preserving relationship. He doesn't categorize everything. It's relationship. And look how the New Testament's shorter than the Old Testament. <laughs> and look how Jesus took all of the uh, commandments and consolidated them into two. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's, that's what Jesus point. did. He brought the simplicity and brought it back to the spirit of the law. He did. And at the same time, Sean, um, we, we need the older covenant there of laws until people come into the law of Christ. So we need, it's always been wrong to murder. Of course, Jesus reaffirms these things, you know, uh, in, in, the, in the New Testament. There's always, I mean, 10 commandments. I mean, it's not that big. It's not, that's not really a burden. It's just a hand few, handful of things. But to your point, Jesus in the newer covenant presents the full intention of the law. And that's to love the one true lawgiver and love your neighbor. Okay. And, and there are things in the Older Testament that um, are crucial for just how to govern society and a nation. For example, um, rules of warfare are there, okay? And um, uh, other things like, you know, but if it's it, wrong it's to only steal. 66 books. It's, it's, it's not, uh, oh. the Bible is not, uh, you know, so it's not like a legal library. It's, it's, it's not yeah. exhaustive. No, it's not exhaustive. It's a, it's a book of principle, principle-based law. And that's something else I've learned is that uh, <clears throat> we have a number of laws on a given subject or, or an area of life. But what is um, to be understood is that there's principles behind them, actually. Okay. And so we want to know what is the principle? What's the idea? You know, and you can ask this to people at the counter for crying aloud, these different agencies. What if you ask a question like, what is the idea behind this? Or principle i mean you're going to get deer in the headlight type of thing okay you just some people blow a circuit i've had it happen you, <laughs> because you know what they are Sean? they're they're paper processors they don't know law they're they're complying themselves they're doing a job right they're just doing their job and all they do is they process sheep. paperwork what's that they're like sheep i mean they're, yes. they're normies they're neurotypicals yes. they're not the people who are uh thinking deeply on these things yes john here's just as I'm, we're talking on this uh i just got a little clarity instead of us filling out their paperwork the way we rebuild our family governments the way we overcome the evil empire is we perfect our own paperwork and then file it with the well with the court quite frankly i'm not giving these agencies anything i i ask them questions like the department of motor vehicles but two years later down in florida no answer. Still no answer. Okay, because that's the beauty. When we stop consenting to Roman civil law, stop complying with all their licensing. Licensing is foreign to the American Christian way of life. It really is our common law. All right, licensing. It, we're in a licensure culture, and it's just liberating to just um, see that. No, I'm going to perfect my paperwork, and I'm going to submit it, and it, it, and it goes well. It's just, and it's just like, this is a whole new way of life, Sean. And it's really how to take our country back, just starting at the family level, the household as an embassy for our true lawgiver. That's great, Barry. You know, I think that's very empowering because people feel like victims of the bureaucracy that uh, they are forced into these agreements. And any contract where you're forced to be a part of it isn't really a contract, a bona fide contract at all. Yes. Uh, so we need to get back to those principles of creating voluntary contracts with ourselves and other parties uh, that, that benefits both sides instead of this one-sided way. So Amen. I think that's yes. going to be very important with re rebuilding America, rebuilding our households, our communities. Um, so any final thoughts before we wrap up the episode? Uh just encourage people to assess, you know, um, just have people think, uh, 
you know, are they asking permission to live their life or right. not? Or are they really obeying their head, the true lawgiver, Jesus Christ, uh, because he is all final authority, the written word, the written law of God. And so uh, it will be wonderful for people to reflect. You know, here we are, we're coming into the end of this year, 2021. Thanksgiving is uh, just a few days away. And then, you know, we're coming to Christmas. And so it's always a time to, we're ending a, 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 the yearly cycle, right? And then there's the New Year's resolution. It's a, it's a, t- it's a time to reflect. Uh, and thank God for these cycles. You know, we have the daily, there's the weekly, and then, you know, we have this yearly cycle where, um, what are we doing here in America with all the attacks of the communists, the Marxists and, and socialism? And really we can start just with the socialism, Sean, is that when we ask permission to do things, uh, we're, we're complying with the force and threat of force and let's be patriots American patriots. Those are people who are zealously in love with their country and will defend its interests. And its interest is not you complying with agencies of government. No, that's the attack. No, the interests of America, the real America, is from 1620 to 1820, the 200-year, uh, the 200-year founding. And since we are coming into Thanksgiving, Sean, it would it would uh, be well for householders to, with your families, with your children, grandchildren, how about reading the Mayflower Compact, okay? And, and, and find out afresh what this country is about because the gospel of Jesus Christ, Christianity is right there from the beginning before they even got off the Mayflower, before they stepped on the land there at Plymouth Rock, famous Plymouth Rock, um, look at whose law they're citing and what faith Italian did. And so that's, yeah. that's it's America's we roots. Here. We can't yes, ignore that's, it. That's Thanksgiving right. and Christmas are the perfect times to reflect on it and educate your families about it. I have a Thanksgiving special coming up with a documentary filmmaker who created a series on America's Christian founding, including uh, the Mayflower Compact and other aspects of it. Really? So yeah, it's going to be a good one. Playing it on thanks- it is? Or is that- Thanksgiving Day. Uh, yeah, it's the or- the maker of the pil- the name of the program is the Pilgrims. Okay. Uh, so yeah, everyone can check that on Thanksgiving Day in American yep. Media Periscope. No, can you say who the uh- who you interviewed or is that now his name's like- escaping me at the moment? Uh, oh, okay. But <laughs> his website is. Um, uh-huh. Providence Freedom, something like that. It's not the okay. It's not Marshall Foster, is it? No, no. Okay, uh, no. That's great. I'll look for it. So that's being released. On I Thanksgiving? actually emailed you a copy of the whole documentary. You did. So yes, you can check that out. Wonderful. Yes. No, that's so. That's yes. This is uh, what we can be doing in the holidays when we enjoy all of our good food and do enjoy that. Bring some of our history and. Um, if people want to reach out to me, if they need some some ideas, uh, some little teaching moments, you know, some tools, it, it's it's um, we want to do this as heads of households and cast vision about what's good about our country, the Christian founding. It is glorious, Sean, and so this is how we take back our country. Is what you do at the holiday? These holy, actually, they're they're historically called holy days. Okay, there's not that many actually, but Thanksgiving is one of those holidays, which is actually a holy day of celebrating the providence of God for him providing those Mayflower pilgrims when they were going to get starved out and there was a drought and there was no, there was no rain for, and their crops are wilting, but they prayed, they did some fasting and God intervened. Uh, And that's in uh, Bradford's manuscript on the history of the Plymouth plantation. So America began with some answers to prayer, lest they were going to starve out. Okay. Yeah. And then God used the Indians to uh, befriend them and show them how to fertilize their cornfields with fish. <clears throat> and, um, and that's an example of the good. We have good relations with the Indians. You know, um, one of the attacks in our country is that, you know, the white European blue eyed man, uh, blonde European came over here and just raped and pillaged. Right. Well, there's there's sin is out there of course we're not apologizing for where there was wrong things done 
okay? But there's plenty good. And people who write the textbooks and the curriculums, they're really not bringing those things forward. That's exactly what this interview is about, the revisionist oh. history. Uh, so on Thanksgiving Day, 6 p.m. Eastern, you guys can watch that on AmericanMediaPeriscope.net because it's exactly awesome. about the Marxist uh, attack on our mm. nation's founding. Mm -hmm. So uh, Barry, do okay. you want to go into this episode or next episode to recognize the people who have reached out? Uh, we had a couple, but you know what? I didn't get that together for today. So uh, we can, you know, I can share next time on uh, acknowledging some people and, and some uh, exchange there. But uh, yeah, I thank Great. you for having me on today to share, to encourage. And, uh, you know, um, we are rebuilding family government. Okay. And so let's, I'm, I, I want people to think on that as we end, you know, come into the end of the year. And uh, we're here to cast vision about what's good about our country and then real world application, not theory, but real world application, cutting the strings, but you just do it one area at a time. And so whoever has an area of their life, they want to get greater Liberty on, yeah. um, have them reach out to me at Liberty is the law. And, um, uh, we, uh, I, I, this is how we save America. This is how we save our families. We, we mm -hmm. start in the soul and we have a principles approach and that, by extension, yes. then we're going to know what to do uh, legally and with our vocation and financially. All of those things okay. are natural extensions of those spiritual principles. So check it out, libertiesthelaw.us. You can check out my website and my new mini documentary at seanmorganreport.com. You can click on films and see the documentary that I produced and that Barry's daughter, Joy, edited it's called mark zuckerberg's metaverse you can check mm -hmm. it out there for free it's a 10 minute uh, mini documentary god bless all you patriots see you next sunday thank you for being a part of our christian self-government ministry by supporting our sponsor. A way to support the channel and be able to get a really great experience of waking up every single day with The Great Awakening Gourmet Coffee. So this is the website, thegreatawakeningcoffee.com. You go here, you click on Get Started, and, uh, and then it takes you to the next step. You choose whether you're going to buy the coffee for your home or your office. So we'll just click Home for now. And the website will load here. And by the way, this company is totally Patriots owned. So that's what I really like about this company. You can choose what kind of coffee you want, ground, whole, or the K-cup. So we'll just choose ground. It's the easiest. That's the way I, I buy it. And then you can pick the kind that you like. I prefer the, uh, the Washington blend, South America blend. Click on that. You put in the size that you want, one pound or two pound. You can subscribe so that it sends the same amount of coffee at the same time every month. And then click subscribe and save, then click on view cart. Make sure you put in the coupon code QFAQ to get a discount. And then proceed to checkout, and you know how to handle the rest with your credit card. It's that simple. Uh, you know what's going on right now with the corporate coffee is they're donating a bunch of millions of dollars to Black Lives Matter. So ditch the corporate coffee. Check out thegreatawakeningcoffee.com. Support the Patriots. Support this channel. Thank you so much for your support. God bless.